Hey y'all, Coach and Fai here talking about the year 2021 and how it seems like all timelines seem to be pointing towards this year. Talking about the 120th Jubilee that you hear about in the book of Genesis. It seems like it'll start here about in the year 2021 being the sabbatical year that'll fall before that Jubilee year. Then you're talking about the 400 year prophecy also found in Genesis about chapter 15. That one appears to be pointing to the year 2021 as well. I've already done a class on it, but I'm going to have to fine tune it a little bit. I did a class yesterday about the half hour found in uh, Revelations chapter 8 and 1. That seems to point to the year 2021. And we'll be touching on the 1,290 days as well as the 1,335 days. Those also seem to be pointing to the year 2021. But in this video, I want to touch on the 1,260 days found in the book of Revelations. As well as Daniel's 70th week prophecy found in the book of Daniel chapter 9. As well as his time, times, and half a time prophecy found in chapter 12. It seems as though all of those point to the year 2021. Okay, so now I'm going to try to run through this pretty quickly. We've been putting out several classes on these timelines. And so a lot of the information is starting to get redundant, even for our channel. And so I'm just going to just go through here. Um, if if you if anything doesn't make sense, you're going to have to go in and check out some of the other uh, classes that we've done. We're planning on, you know, Lord willing, we will put together a final presentation as we get all of these um, timelines and calculations done. But we want to, you know, take care of them in smaller chunks just to give you guys opportunity to to add your um, information and what you understand about these so that we can have so that the final product can um, be a collaborative effort. So if you would uh, go ahead and be prepared to uh, leave comments as we go and go ahead and hit that like button. It's always easier to remember to um, hit that button, you know, earlier than it is to uh, do it later and um, make sure that you have the, your subscription button pushed and that bell notification button pushed. Uh, YouTube is doing some, you know, a lot of funny stuff these days. You know, I think that's all of, you know, the um, big communication networks like Facebook and Twitter. Well, YouTube has this thing they're doing and I believe they affect the uh, subscribers. So make sure your subscriber notification and stuff is still pushed. But anyway, <clears throat> We want to jump over here to uh, Daniel in chapter nine first, because like we said, we want to talk about one of the things we want to talk about is the 70 weeks prophecy that you hear about in Daniel chapter nine. Um, it, um, without going through all of the detail here, um, just briefly touching on this, what this is talking about is how um, Daniel was giving that he was given a timeline about the uh, 70 weeks that the father would give. Um, for the judgment of the people and the holy city. Um, and Daniel told them that it would be 69 weeks before they would see the uh, um, the Messiah, the first advent. Now, the first advent was in 26 AD, but he was saying that it would come 69 weeks after the uh, decree by Artaxerxes, which we understand was in 457 uh, BC. So if you count 69 weeks from uh, 457 BC, you end up in 26 um, AD, but that's only 69 weeks. Uh, uh, weeks um, and but he, he so he left one week short but when you read down in um, chapter 27 of chapter 9 what he was telling Daniel is that in the middle of the last week the Messiah would be cut off talking about his uh, crucifixion and his burial would come in the middle of that week so you had 69 weeks until um, 26 AD when the Christ first started his ministry 
ministry and his ministry lasted a half a week talking about seven years his ministry lasted a half a week three and a half years until the year 30 uh, AD and it, it so he was short of the other um, um, weeks here let me show you a calculation you know um, it always helps me to you know work these um, uh, numbers out while I'm doing these videos for one it helps get me straight make sure that you know my numbers are adding up and it, it's actually what's helping me to learn you know what's going on I'm learning from these videos just probably even more so than you guys are um, but anyway so you're looking at the um, the the decree in 457 AD that was by Artaxerxes. And then when you go 69 times 7 or 69 weeks forward plus one year, you end up in the year 26 AD. So that would be the 69 uh, weeks starting there. But then if you look at when the Messiah was crucified, you would say another seven uh, weeks divided by two. Uh, let's see that. That would have been... Um, that's going to be 30 AD when he was crucified. So, and so that's the time period when he was cut off. Okay, now here's what's important to understand how um, this ties in to um, the 120th Jubilee, as well as the other, you know, Everything else that we're talking about and how it converges is that when you look at when the um, Messiah's uh, um, ministry started and when it en ended, it falls in the middle of the uh, the middle of the Jubilee there. What would have been the eighth or the 80th Jubilee um the 80th Jubilee year started in 12 uh, AD. Um, but then when you look at when he was actually crucified, you have to add um, a number of weeks. So let's show you how this works. Started in 12. Um, let's see. I'm just going to save that there. So we'll go 12 AD plus uh, seven times two. That's two weeks into the next Jubilee cycle. And so when you think about the the start of the Messiah's ministry, um, it didn't land on a Jubilee year. It landed uh, two years into the cycle. And when you multiply times uh, uh, 2.5 or two and a half years, um, you'll see that it actually ended um, uh, two and a half years into that cycle. I guess when I do it this way, you actually uh, see it better because you're actually seeing the half a week. That seven divided by two is the half a week. Um, that's the 69 and a half weeks that uh, Daniel was talking about. So what we understand from this is that there is the last half of the Daniel 70th week that we are waiting on. So to show you this a different way that, you know, we see that 490 times eight, that's talking about the uh, eighth time. Um, like Daniel said, it was 70 weeks, 70 weeks equals 490 years. That's what's considered a time. And that'll be important in this discussion, this 490 years. But OK, so we are seeing that the um, the eighth time actually lands on uh, 12.5. Uh, but to find out when the Jubilee year would actually be we or when the sabbatical year or when the Jubilee year actually would it come to a close at 49 years. We're just going to um, go out 49 years um, from 12. And that takes us to 61.5 years. So when we're looking at so we had 61.5 years would have been the sabbatical year. But if you remember, the Messiah came at 30. 
years. So that equals 30 point, uh, 31 point five years short. And so this, this is key here. When we look at this 31 point five years that was left in Daniel's 70th week, I know this can get a little bit confusing, but you think about that half a week that Daniel was talking about um, that was short from 30 A.D. until 61 A.D. or 61.5 A.D. Well, that's captured in these 31 years here. And so when you look at um, these 31 and a half years in jubilee or in sabbatical year cycles seven year cycles we see that we are uh four weeks and a half weeks short so we have to remember that that you know that's how many weeks was left in the uh in daniel's 70th week was uh that's how that's how that's how short it was. That's how that's where it was cut short at until it made it until the uh, next jubilee year was uh, seven weeks and a half a week. But okay, now watch what happens when we start adding these times in here. So we want to say. Um, this 31.5 years, and then we're going to say plus one time that takes us to 521, but we, we want to get to our current time. So we're going to have to multiply this 490 years times four to bring this closest as we can get to our current time. That takes us to 1991, and then when we add the uh, 30, when we start at 30 years, remember we started in 30 AD, we end up in the year 2021. Now, this is why I'm doing these classes like this, you know, because I know this is this is some tough stuff, and I'm really trying to work it out so that when we get ready to put together the final presentation, you know, we'll have all of these bugs and kinks and stuff worked out. We're planning on doing it in a PowerPoint presentation, and then it'll be even more clear. But like I said, I want to give you guys, especially you guys that are smarter than me, the opportunity to, you know, weigh in and see what you think. You know, so what this is saying is that when you start in the year 30 AD at the uh, the um, burial of the Messiah and you finish out the Jubilee uh cycle going all the way to the end of those 49 years to 61 AD you would have had to add four weeks and a half week and then you look and you start counting the times um, it brings you to 2021 this is what we're talking about all all timelines seem to point to 2021 but you notice to get here the big jump to get here was that four times four uh, four times 490 years that's in there. So now let's look at what actually is real interesting that came out of that. If we, because what, well, actually let's go over and let's look at the scripture on the um, next part that we want to talk about before we break this down. All right, here we back are back over in Daniel chapter 9, where we're going to go over to Daniel in chapter 12, because we want to look at this other timeline that we hear in uh, verse 7, where it's telling um, Daniel, these are the angels, the man clothed in linen, who is possibly one, one of the archangels. I'm not going to try to say which one it is right now, but he's telling Daniel, um, he's telling Daniel when would the um the he's basically telling him when the church age how long the church age is going to go you know through how long you know the, the church age we're going to we, we know was started by constantine back there in about you know the fourth century uh 306 320 depends on how you look at it um it was started by constantine this is talking about the beginning of the roman catholic church this is the 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 guy who 
was at first killing the Christians and then all of a sudden decided he was a Christian and he was the head of the Christian church. And then he went in and changed all the rules, the times and the laws and everything else to make it fit, you know, the religion that he had already been involved in. And that's what we know today as the church age. Well, Daniel is being told here in chapter 12 how long this period would last. And see there he's talking about, he said, a time, times and half a time. Now, this time, time and half a time was what we saw back over in Daniel and chapter nine when it was talking about the 70, the 70 weeks. Um, each one of these 70 weeks is equivalent to a time, 490 years. And so in Daniel in chapter 12, he's telling him that these uh, that the um, the uh, uh, the Romans would actually have control of what we know today as the church for this time, time and half a time. And then he goes on to tell him, you know, what's going to happen, you know, after that's over. So now let's look and see how this plays out. Because when we were looking in our calculation, it said four times. Well, let's break that down a little bit. Okay. So we start off in 30 AD. That's when we had the uh, crucifixion of Christ. Then we know to get to the end of that Jubilee cycle, we had to go, what, four weeks plus a half a week. So that's seven divided by two, not 72, but seven divided by two. That takes us to 61.5. And then when we come in and we're going to add four times 490, that takes us to 21.5. So now what that's telling us is from the the uh, crucifixion of Christ was actually four times instead of three and a half times instead of a time, a times and a half a time, which equals three and a half times. We see a time, time. We see four times here. So let's start off in the year 2021 and let's back up. And see what happens. He told what Daniel told him was was it was a time, which is you know one four hundred and ninety years. Then he told him and a times that's going to be two four hundred and ninety year cycles. And then he told him a half a time. So if we start off in the year twenty twenty one, and we're going to go backwards, we'll go back in time. First of all, we're going to go back four hundred and ninety years divided by two. That's the half a time. Look where we end up. 1776. Now, I found that really, really interesting, 1776, because, you know, we know that in 1776, that's when uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed here in the United States. And if you want to know the significance of the United States, you know, like like we were saying, you know, all roads point to 2021. Um, you have to think about the 400 and year 400 year prophecy given to Abraham back there in Genesis chapter 15. We'll cover that in another class. But that 400 year uh, prophecy is actually pointing to the United States and the, the 1776 is also pointing to the United States. And, you know, I found it really, really interesting how when you look at this half a time from the year uh, 2021, it takes you back to 1776. But let's let's go on. Let's go back. Um, now we're going to go back uh Two times, because he said a time, times, and half a time. So this time, we're going to go back 490 times two. And that takes us to 796 B.C. I mean, not B.C., but A.D. And you may not know of anything significant that happened in 796. I tried to find out some interesting stuff that went on. So I went in and started, you know, trying to Google uh, 796. And I found some interesting stuff. Um, I, I, this is another reason why, you know, uh, I want to do this video. You know, not only do I you know, help remind myself, you know, I can come back and watch this video as I put together the final presentation. But hopefully, you know, you guys can search 796 as well and see, you know, what interesting stuff you can find that'll come out of that year. So let's jump over here on the web here. And it, uh, 
have to apologize if it's making this phone stutter and stammer and stuff, but uh, I don't know how to fix that yet. But we see in 1776 is talking about the Declaration of Independence. But I want to come over and I want to show you um, this other document here um, that we found. It's uh, Roman Emperors, what is it? RomanEmperors.org. This is talking about Irene. And then when we look for the year, um, let's see, uh, 796, we see a few times it's talking about 796. Um, some events that happened in 796 that we can read about uh, on this page. But the most interesting one was this one down here. Um, that's talking about this, what is it, the assessment of Constantine, the uh, sixth and Irene's takeover. And but the thing about it, talking about down here, how the uh, documents or the what does it say? Um, he signed the acts of the Council of Ia. Uh, in uh, 787 and joined the celebration around the restoring the relics of the Eophemia in 796. So in other words, the Second Council of Nicaea, um, which occurred in 787, that's the one when they had, when they uh, said pretty much that the Catholic Church would be, would have relics. In other words, they would have um, those um, what we know today as crucifixions and pictures of Christ, those idols. It was in the council, the second council of Nicaea, that they declared that the Catholic Church would worship idols. You know, well, that was all signed. That's they signed that in 796 is the way I understand this. And I thought that was really interesting because, you know, the second commandment is huge, guys. You know, the second commandment of the Bible, which says, you know, you won't have any idols and you won't bow down to any idols. You know, that's one of the main things that the Catholic Church is known for is the bowing down to the idols. And the kids and the idols and all of the stuff they do, they call it, they call them icons or whatever, I guess, to make themselves feel better. But they're, they're, they're idols. And, you know, that second commandment talks, you know, it, it goes on to talk about, you know, the thousands of people that love, you know, the Christ, meaning those who won't bow down to these idols. And, well, in 796, um, this is when they basically became Catholicism. Idol worship became Catholicism in 796 AD. Now, I haven't done an exhaustive search or anything. You know, I found a few, you know, other things in 796, um, mostly in that document uh, about Irene or whoever. But, you know, that seemed to be the most most significant thing to me in 796. But anyway, that that was we so we've traveled back in time uh, um, to 796. Now, let's go one more seven or one more 490 year clip. And that takes us to 306 AD. So we say, well, what significant happened in 306 AD? But now, now notice that it says 306.5 in our calculation here. That's important because that's what that's talking about is the fall of the year opposed to the beginning of the year or the first month on the sacred calendar. This is talking about the seventh month on the sacred calendar as being the beginning of this cycle and or this year and so it will last until 307 so when we're looking for these dates like we were looking at 796 and something to occur we also have to look in uh, the early part of 797 well let's go over to a website called softschools.com and show you what happened in 307 uh, AD Like I said, this is softschools.com, but we see in 307 um, saying the common era is when that guy Constantine the Great uh, took over Christianity. 
It says here, Christian, Constantine the Great was the first Roman emperor to accept Christianity. Constantine allowed Christians to practice their religion freely, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, freely and to actually, you know, accept Catholicism, what, what they was free to do. Um, he actually uh, changed the the way we worship Uh it was during those councils of Trent and councils of Nicaea when they uh, formalized Easter worship and Christmas worship and all of the other uh, before, you know, which were, you know, before he did that, they were considered pagan holidays and pagan festivals. Well, it was Constantine and the Catholic Church who Christianized those pagan holidays, even, you know, even as far as Halloween. You know, many Christians today celebrate even Halloween and the other um, uh, um, pagan rituals to the fertility gods or whatever, even to this day. Well, the thing about it, we see that, you know, this kind of what we're looking here is started in 307 uh, AD, 307 uh, CE in a common era. And so that's the beginning of the time. So you have the time, which started in 307 takes you to 796 when they formalized idol worship and then you have the times or the two times that takes you from 796 to 1776 which is you know the declaration of independence for um that nation who you know were promised to be judged at the end of those 400 years and then after that it takes you to the year uh 2021 so like we said it seems like all timelines are pointing to the year 2021 <laughs> it this this is starting to get a little creepy, guys, but, you know, it's understandable, especially from where I'm sitting, because it's like the fa the father has his hand on me as far as these dates are concerned. You know, I can't really do much else else besides, you know, study these dates here. And I praise him for it because, you know, I'm a math guy. I love numbers. If you can't tell, I love numbers. I'm, I'm just trying to keep them simple here so everybody else can keep up with me. Otherwise, you know, I'd go crazy with this little calculator here. But like I said, you know, we're just doing this to work out the bugs and the kinks on this. So please help me out down in the comment section because, you know, we're going to put together a final presentation here. You know, once we if we ever, you know, get all of these things work, you know, you know, figured out, you know, as far as, you know, how what will make sense that they all point to the year 2021. We're going to put them in a final presentation to present and, you know, we, we thank you guys for your input and, and your support of this channel. And that, that reminds me, you know, we really su thank you guys. You know, a lot of you guys are supporting this channel financially. Um, there's even, you know, one of you guys who um, has uh, uh, donated a lot of Third Testament books, you know, for our viewers. Um, so we'll we'll be um working to you know see how we're going to get those out and so we really thank all of you guys support and say keep it up you know and one of the main reasons things you could do to support our channel is hit that subscribe button hit that like button leave a comment share these videos on your facebook and your twitter and you know and you know we appreciate all that you do and i guess we'll close it out there